This video will show you how to use the Universal Laser Systems Laser Cutter found in the Digital Print Lab. First, make sure to download your Illustrator file onto the computer. You can also create a new file by going to Illustrator and selecting File New. I like to start with a 32 by 18 inch document which replicates the bed of the laser cutter. Be sure to use RGB color space under Advanced Options. To show your rulers, go to View, Rulers, Show Rulers. You can create any vector artwork by using any of the vector tools in Illustrator. Here we are using the box tool and creating a box shape that is the size of the material we will be cutting. This will allow us to lay out our artwork onto that document size and maintain the proportions. Here I am using the pen tool to create artwork that will be cut out. You can also use the text tool. As long as you just want a engraving with the raster mode, you can create this text in black. If you wanted the text to be cut out or scored with the vector mode, you will have to create outlines on that text. Make sure that each of these vector shapes have no fill and use a RGB 100% color. You can see the R is in 255R, 0 green, 0 blue. We also want to make sure that the stroke is 0 0.001. Make sure there is no transparency or effects. The stroke should be on the line and in its default mode. Here I'm going to create a vector cut that we will not cut. It will just recognize the outer shape of this. So I will change the color channel to a 255 blue, still with a 0.001 stroke. The text I will keep in black with 000 RGB color, and that will default to a raster You'll do one more type of cut on a different color channel, this time a 255 green, and this will be a score cut. If you want different types of cuts other than three, you can create a combination of 255 100% colors to create other channels. Make sure to save this file on the PC. Then, if we are ready to print, go File, Print. Make sure the printer is the VLS660. Go to Setup, and then Preferences. In these laser settings, you will find two tabs at the top. Material Database and Manual Control. Start in Material Database. Find the material that close, most closely represents the material you are using. Then change the print direction to up and change the material thickness. Here we will use the calipers found on top of the PC. Turn them on, close them tight, and zero them out. Then use the thumb dial to open them up and clamp onto the material you are using. Note the number measured and
put that number in the material thickness. Make sure to apply your settings and then go to Manual Control tab. Here you will see what the default settings are for that material you have chosen. Black is usually defaulted as the raster channel. Red is usually defaulted as the cut through channel. And then we have green, yellow, and blue, which can be different types of scores. Here we're gonna turn the green down to a low setting, and the blue will have zero power and a very fast speed. This will just outline the document size without cutting it. Be sure only one color channel is highlighted and then press set for every change you make. When finished, make sure to press apply and then OK. Press print and then print. Before we use the machine, we always need to check the cleanliness of the lenses and mirrors. There are three places to check. They are labeled on the machine. The supplies for cleaning the lenses and mirrors are found above the fume extractor or in the green drawers to the right. The first place is under this black shroud with the label Clean 1. Remove the black shroud by lifting up and pushing to the right. Add lens cleaner to a Q-tip until it is saturated. Then bring the saturated Q-tip to the lens or mirror, applying the solution to that area. Agitate the surface, but do not scrub. Then use the canned air to blow this solution off the lens with the dirt. Do not tip the canned air or the propellant will come out dirtying that area more. Use the canned air in the upright position only. The second area is under this black box. Unscrew the thumb screw to the right hand side and lift the box off. Under this box you will find a mirror. Use the flashlight to put a glare on the surface to see if you see any dirt. Then again use the lens cleaner to saturate the q-tip, bring the q-tip to the surface of the mirror and apply the solution. Then use the canned air in the upright position to blow off the mirror. Utilize the straw to angle the air in the proper direction instead of tipping the can. Then replace the box and the thumb screw. The final area to clean is under the plate with the writing 2.0 written on it. Unscrew all three thumb screws. Then remove the entire front face plate that says 2.0. Wiggle it if it is stick, stuck. Then use the flashlight to observe the surfaces of the mirror and both sides of the lens. If there are any particles or dirt, use the same method. Apply lens cleaner to the Q-tip Make sure it's saturated and then add the liquid to the surface of the lenses and the mirror. Agitate them and blow those surfaces off, removing the liquid with the dirt and grime in it off with the air. Once clean, Replace with the 2.0 facing upright and replace the three thumb screws. It is helpful to put a sheet of material or paper under what you, where you are working. 
That way, the thumb screws do not fall below the machine. Place your material in the top left-hand corner of the machine. Align it with the two rulers. Close the lid and turn the laser on, the compressor on, and the fume extractor. The laser has a power button on the front, the compressor a switch on its side, and the fume extractor a button on the front. Once you send the file from Illustrator, open the UCP, the little red icon on the bottom of the toolbar. There you will see your artwork appear in this new program. To align the artwork in the top left hand corner, use the crosshair button and type in the coordinates 0, 0. That will put the artwork in the top left hand corner. Once all three machines are turned on, you will see the play button turn green. When you are ready, press the play button to have the job start. You will see the job progress in this UCP program. You should also monitor the job in the actual machine to watch for excessive smoke, flames that do not self-extinguish, or any other unexpected results. Be sure to note the safe material list posted on the wall above the computer, and the dangerous materials list posted on the machine itself. Do not use any of these materials.